Worth, we begin with breaking news. Mixed verdicts in the Kristen Smart murder trial. Paul Flores found guilty of killing Kristen Smart, a Cal Poly student who disappeared in 1996. And Paul's father, Ruben Flores, tried separately, was found not guilty of accessory to murder after the fact. We have live team coverage for you, beginning with News Channel reporter Dave Alley at the Monterey County Courthouse in Salinas. Dave. Paul Flores is now a convicted killer. After a jury delivered its verdict here at the Monterey County Courthouse this afternoon, deciding Flores is guilty of murdering Kristen Smart. When that verdict was read early this afternoon, it was a packed courtroom here again in Salinas. Among those in attendance uh, inside that courthouse, uh, members of the Smart family, her parents, Stan and Denise Smart, as well as her brother and sister, and many other family and friends as well. San Luis Obispo County District Attorney Dan Dow was here, as was Sheriff Ian Parkinson. Now, within moments of the jury entering the courtroom, Judge Jennifer O'Keefe asked the jury for a person for the sealed verdict. The large envelope was then delivered to the judge who went through the contents. She then passed along the decision for the court clerk to read out loud. Tension build, uh, built inside the courtroom as the people in attendance waited for the clerk to announce the decision. Within moments, she read the verdict, guilty of first-degree murder. Denise Smart silently wept, and other family and friends were visibly relieved to hear that decision, while Paul Flores showed very little emotion as he was standing next to his attorney, Robert Sanger. The judge then thanked the jury for their dedication in the long trial, which lasted 14 weeks. The jurors were then excused. Flores was then removed from the courtroom, taken out by bailiffs with the Monterey County Sheriff's Department. About 20 minutes later, the verdict for his father, Ruben Flores, uh, that was announced. He was charged with being an accessory after the fact. Now, unlike his son, Ruben Flores was found to be not guilty. When the decision was announced, defense attorney Harold Misick patted Flores on the shoulder and smiled. Afterwards, Ruben Flores spoke with members of the media while walking out of the courthouse. All that stuff they say is evidence. You look through it and there is no evidence against anybody, me or Paul. There wasn't any time and, and just uh, too much made up stuff. That's all I can say. Now, the judge later said Ruben Flores would have his ankle monitoring device removed. He's warned that since he was released on bail following his arrest back in April of 2021, he told the media that now he would head back home and resume his life in Arroyo Grande. Again, Paul Flores has been found guilty of murdering Kristen Smart back in 1996. He will be sentenced here at the Monterey County Courthouse on Friday, December 9th. He will have the ability to appeal today's verdict. I'm going to bring in my colleague here, Karen Cruz Odunia. She was at a press conference that was held late this afternoon by the San Luis Obispo County District Attorney's Office, and she has more on that. Karen. Thank you so much, Dave. So I was at the press conference earlier today, and essentially it was in response to both verdicts. So Sheriff Ian Parkinson, as well as Deputy, or excuse me, Deputy District Attorney Chris Pubrev was also there. Uh, Dan Dow was also there, and also the Smart family were present at the press conference. And it started with District Attorney Dan Dow, and, and he said after more than 26 years, justice was delivered for Kristen Smart. Sheriff Ian Parkinson and the prosecution team were at the press conference, as I mentioned earlier and the Smart family were also present and they provided a statement. Kristen Smart's dad, Stan Smart, provided a statement on behalf of the Smart family. He said their faith with the Slow County Sheriff's Department has been restored and thanked the prosecution team, the entire Sheriff's Department and your own backyard podcaster Chris Lambert for bringing light during what he calls their darkest moments. Smart said it has been an emotional and long journey. He ended by saying Kristen will always be in their hearts and there well, there is not a day where his family do not think of her. Denise Smart also spoke briefly and thanked everybody for their support. And Dan Dow then spoke and gave credit to the prosecution team for their efforts. Today's guilty verdict provides some sense of justice for Kristen, the Smarts, and for our community. Without Kristen, there is no joy or happiness in this verdict. This case is not over. This case will not be over until Kristen is returned home. I really feel like this is a, a day for a, to recognize a community effort. Um, just about the entirety of Slow County uh, collaborated to make this day happen. And this is a prosecution that our community can be proud of.
The Sheriff's Department also gave credit to Chris Lambert for helping identify new witnesses and ultimately the department's goal is to end sexual violence. And Deputy District Attorney Chris Perel said he was disappointed to hear Ruben Flores' verdict. However, he said he was satisfied with Paul Flores' verdict. And like Ian Parkinson said, he will not rest or the entire department will not rest until they bring Kristen Smart home. For now, live in Salinas, I'm News Channel reporter Karen Cruz Arduña, Beth and CJ, back to you. All right, thank you for the update, Karen. And Cal Poly's President Jeffrey Armstrong released the following statement after the verdicts were read. Kristen Smart's disappearance is a tragic part of our Cal Poly community's history. Today's guilty verdict is a welcome development in the pursuit of justice. He added, our thoughts continue to be with Denise and Stan Smart and the family. And people in Arroyo Grande are celebrating Paul Flores' guilty verdict, saying the Smart family finally did get justice. And News Channel reporter Christina Rodriguez picks up our team coverage live with community reaction. Christina? It's a day decades in the making. Paul Flores was... Paul Flores was found guilty of murdering Kristen Smart. His father, Ruben, who lives here in Arroyo Grande, was found not guilty. Locals cheered when the guilty verdict was delivered for Paul Flores. Business owners at the AG Village say they finally feel some closure and justice for Kristen Smart's family. But many people in the community were not happy Ruben Flores was found not guilty. I'm just happy for the family. I'm happy for our community. Uh, relief, peace of mind, closure, 26 years. It's a long time to wait. Uh, ecstatic. I think that finally justice is served after 26 years. Um, I can't imagine what the Smart family is going through right now. Um, I just, it's finally good news coming out of this. It's going to have closure. It's a good feeling to be able to like have Community members say the verdict is a start, but they hope Kristen's body is found. The community has come together here at Heritage Square Park, wearing the color purple in honor of Kristen Smart's favorite color. Live in Arroyo Grande, I'm News Channel reporter Christina Rodriguez. All right, thank you, Christina. And our team coverage of the verdict continues with News Channel reporter Tony Almanza. And he is live in Santa Maria with reaction to the case coming now from a retired FBI agent. Tony? Former FBI agent Dan Payne says this is the most difficult case he has seen. Payne worked as a special agent for 31 years and with a number of homicide cases. He said the majority of these cases end up being not guilty, but obviously that did not happen in Paul Flores' case today. Payne said the jurors make their decision on what they hear from the courtroom. He said the prosecution was convincing enough with evidence that Paul Flores was guilty of first-degree murder. Payne also said cases can be difficult when there isn't a body in the case. It's an extremely difficult case to prove. And this case was proved basically on circumstantial evidence. And all I can say is kudos to the prosecutor for uh, presenting the case in such a way that the jury could reach a, a conclusion. He said that no two trials are ever similar. Each one has a different jury with 12 people who have different trains of thoughts and backgrounds. But they all have to come together to decide on a verdict. I'll have more tonight on Dan Payne's analysis tonight at 10 and 11. Live in Santa Maria, I'm News Channel reporter Tony Almanza. All right, thank you for that, Tony. And we will have continuing coverage of the verdict throughout the night. Go visit our mobile app and website for the very latest information.